Good day, hope you are well. I am so excited for this video. I have been looking forward to putting this together for you. I am calling this the ultimate guide, your ultimate resource for targeting stocked rainbow trout in the Texas ponds and lakes. I personally have over 10 years of catching these fish myself that I've learned with my dad. It's been a father-son thing that we've enjoyed and shared for quite some time. So I have a lot of things here before me that you can't see from your perspective, but I'm going to be bringing out for showing and um, visual examples. And I've also have some notes off to the side here because I want it to be a very thorough resource for you to equip you to go out um, and make your trip a success and hopefully bring back your, your daily limit. So we're going to start from square one, whether you're a brand new fisherman to if this is your first experience to uh, targeting or catching stocked rainbow trout or if you're someone who's gone out there a few times and then kind of felt like you know you've been skunked or it hasn't gone so well you've caught a few fish but it's been hard I'm putting this together for you starting at step one and working our way up to, to really um, giving equipping you with what you need to know for successfully catching these fish so very beginning Texas Parks and Wildlife has a winter trout stocking program where they raise these fish in hatcheries around the state and then they're stocked in designated waters around the state of Texas. Now, I also have currently running a series for you where I share daily the rainbow trout stockings that are happening around the state and I tell you the location um, and how many fish. Um, granted, the dates and locations are subject to change, but I'm just sharing with you the information that I have. Also, before you get going, make sure that you have understanding of all the rules and regulations. Uh, you are required to have a valid fishing license, and it does with the freshwater fishing endorsement. Now, if you're under the age of 17, or if you're fishing in a Texas state park, uh, you are exempt from these. Also keep in mind um, the Guadalupe River, there is another location that is stocked and it has its own regulations and, and harvest um, limits. So unfortunately my channel is still too new. I would love to have the link in the description below for you, but if you just go to the Texas Parks and Wildlife website, you'll be able to find those special Guadalupe River regulations. Otherwise, the other waters um, is there's a daily bag limit of five trout. There's no size limit. These trout are stocked to be caught and harvested. They're for the fishermen. It's a, it's a winter program. So we've covered that. Also keep in mind, once you have your location uh, near you that you're going to go to, familiarize yourself with the place itself. So some of these are parks, um, community lakes, ponds, some of them have gated access, um, hour, limited hours of operation, so they're locked and unlocked every morning and evening. So just be aware of the hours before you go out. Familiarize yourself with your local water. Um, something else to keep in mind, when these fish are raised in the hatchery, to my understanding, they're usually fed twice a day. So the, those feedings usually are gonna be in the morning and in the evening. So that's a little tip to keep in mind when you're planning a trip and you're going out. It's a lot like if you're hitting somewhere on the coast, you know. Typically, you'll have a morning bite, you'll have an evening bite, but that's not set in stone, that's not concrete. I'm not saying you can't go out at lunchtime and catch a limited stocked rainbow trout. You certainly can. Just trying to equip you with what's gonna help you. Keep in mind also when you're planning your trip, the weekends are gonna be more crowded. Obviously for a lot of us, weekends are when we have an opportunity to get out there. If you can plan your trip during the week, it'll be better for crowd control. Another advantage for the fishermen is these fish are not fed for a period of time before they're to be stocked. So that also is an advantage for us when these fish come into the water, they're gonna be hungry. Now there have been some instances over the years where I've seen I've seen some stockings go wrong. There's been 
some times where they br they bring the fish out and sometimes they give them uh, I don't know if sedative is the right word but something in the water to calm them for the transport out to the water what that typically looks like is they have these large stock tanks they pull on a trailer behind a truck and they'll back the tr uh, trailer up to the water and open the valves and, and pour the fish out. If you've never seen one of these stockings, it's pretty cool. And the workers that are there doing the stocking, they're really cool. A lot of times they'll, uh, if you're hanging out there um, and you happen to catch a stocking, they'll go in there with a dip net and they'll net these fish up and they'll bring them to you if you wanna be like, hey, do you got it? can I get an idea of the size? You know, what do the fish look like this year? And uh, so they're real cool like that usually. And, uh, and they can be a great resource too. You can talk to them, ask them questions. Um, they're usually real friendly like that. They, they like seeing the fishermen out there participating in the program. Okay, so now that you got an idea of where you're going, you're familiar with the water, um, let's get you the proper tackle to get out there and catch these fish. Again, bearing in mind, these are hatchery raised fish, okay? Generally on average, you're looking at about, say eight to 10 inches on these fish, okay? So, but some of them are even as small as six inches. Over the years, we've caught 13 uh, inch trout is not atypical. I think 14 might be about the biggest dad and I have caught, but that's gonna be your average, okay? Say all that to say these are not large fish. Plan your tackle accordingly. So what I use, what I would recommend is light to ultralight gear. Typically, and the more you hang out with me and, uh, and enjoy my videos, you're gonna find that ultralight fishing happens to be one of my personal favorite uh, ways to fish. So this is a Shimano spinning reel. It's a 500 series. This thing is tiny. The rod that it's on is just an off the shelf rod. You can find it, uh, you know, any of the big box stores uh, that sells fishing stuff. And this is a, I think this is a five foot ultralight rod. So, this gives you an idea, you know, small fish, light tackle. Um, here's another one. It's a little bit bigger. This happens to be a custom rod I built for my daughter. That's right. Your boy builds rods too. We'll get into that later. That can be some future content, custom rod stuff. So this is the same type reel. It's another Shimano. This is a 1000 series. Has, happens to have braid on it. Uh, I typically don't use braid for the stock trout. Doesn't mean you can't. Use what you got. Um, this is a six and a half seven foot rod this is more of a medium light but i think you kind of get the idea just one more for show and tell this is a, a pin ultralight rod that i rebuilt the little custom wrap there custom handle uh, a little shakespeare light reel some airwave guides if you're in the know all that kind of thing anyways this is about a six foot ultralight okay so Light rod, light reel, line. Uh, you know, you could go anywhere from two pound uh, up to eight pound, really. Uh, you could, if you fish 10, that's fine. But um, two, two to six, eight is, is perfect. Again, mono. Um, if you fish braid, that's fine, no problem. Um, also, if you have a 2500 series spinning, spinning reel on a medium, medium light rod, like say your bass rod or something, or something you use uh, inshore saltwater, use that i'm not i'm not suggesting you go out and buy specialized gear for these fish because you can certainly catch them on that tackle i've seen guys out there with their conventional reels uh inshore rods catch them too just understand that you'll have the most fun on the ultralight tackle you'll really get to to play these fish uh you know with that kind of tackle and also something i, I was going to get to later in my notes if you have kids this trout stocking program is excellent and a fun way to get kids involved in fishing. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of advantages uh, that play to the angler side before catching these fish. So also keep in mind, you take the kids out, you can pad those bag limits up. So more anglers, the higher the limit, that sort of thing. So it's, it's a fun way to, um, to get the kids involved. So we've got the rods and reels covered. Now, as far as rigging, so on the ultralight here, again, this is a resource, this is a guide. Take what you will from it, what you like, what benefits you, 
but I'm not saying this is the only thing that works. This is what's worked for me over the years and uh, has really proven successful. The two hooks that I like to use, this is a size 18 treble, and this is a size 10 salmon egg. So these just happen to be two of my favorites. Again, these are small fish, small mouths. You could do a size 12 salmon egg. That's just fine. I've used those with good results. I also kind of lean towards the size 16 treble. It's a little bit bigger than this one. This 18 works great, but a lot of times when you're, when you're catching them, unhooking them, it is so far back in, in their, uh, their throat, they almost swallow it. But it's a very effective uh, hook choice for these fish. Now, something else that I've seen, and again, guys, you know, use it, use, take what you want, leave what you don't. Some small perch hooks like this. I've seen plenty of guys do just fine with these type hooks. But so there's a couple recommendations for you. So on this particular setup here with the salmon egg hook, I've got about, you could do anywhere from a eight to 12 inches, whatever you like, leader. This is just a 10, a 10 pound test leader here. I've got a very small egg sinker. Uh, I like beads. You don't have to use a bead. That's a debatable thing. Use one, don't use one. The fish don't care. So that's one, that's one way. Um, I grew up tying my own leaders. Dad taught me, so I like a leader. But here is an alternative way. We've got the size 18 treble on this one here. Again, this is, this is 10 pound test. Do a couple split shots. And what's cool about this is this is much more simple. Uh, if you don't know how to tie a leader or you haven't tied leaders, anybody can pinch a couple of, uh, of weights on and, and tie your hook on and give yourself, you know, some space, but you have some flexibility with adjustability. You know, you can pinch these off uh, or, or open them a little bit and move them down, move them up. If you want to make your leader shorter, leader longer. And, uh, I'll talk about why we're doing that here in just a minute. Um, so obviously what we're talking about right now is a type of bait fishing. So when dad and I first started out and how you may have started uh, or what other people have told you is there's a lot of way, a lot of thing, different types of things that people use for targeting these fish for bait. I've seen people talk about whole kernel corn, mini marshmallows, uh, salmon eggs, uh, Velveeta cheese or you know little pieces of cheese, that sort of thing. All of those things can work and catch fish, but the thing that I have found to just be the absolute best is Berkeley's power bait, the dough bait. This stuff comes in a variety of colors, variety of scents. Um, they even have the salmon eggs as well. Salmon eggs are great too. I just typically it's not my go-to. I don't use them as much. The dough bait will go much farther um, in regards to what you're getting for what you're paying for. But pretty much this, this is the go. This is what I recommend. This is the go-to right here. Um, my personal favorite, I don't have before me, but it's, it's called Rainbow. And um, I found the best place to get it is just go to the Berkeley Fishing website and order it directly from them. They have everything in stock that you need, the color, the scent that you would want. I mentioned the scents. They, they made a line of like natural scent. This one happen, happens to be Nymph. So it's that color and it's got some glitter in it. Uh, I also happen to have the earthworm one here. So it's supposed to be like an earthworm natural scent and this one's just brown looking. I have caught fish on these. Um, but like I said, rainbow, uh, they've got a rainbow, a sherbet, a lime truce. Um, this is a, like a variation of the lime. It's, it's like two different colors of green and it's got glitter in it. Can you see that glitter? I like the baits with the glitter. I think it just adds a little extra. This is like a fluorescent pink with some glitter. And, and I know it's weird to talk about different colors, but I, personally just the rainbow has always treated me good. Uh, that nymph scent is good. Oh, there's another one, a salmon egg scent. That one's awesome too. It's like a peachy orangish color. Um, 
those are just some of my favorite favorite picks there. But if you stay in the in the power bait line, that is what I really recommend. Now, this stuff is going to be like Play-Doh for adults. You don't want, if you got your kids out there, you don't want your kids messing with this. It's not for human consumption. You don't want your kids putting it in their mouths or, or playing with it and then touching their mouths or anything. So what you're going to do, it's got a consistency just like Play-Doh. Just put your, dip your finger in there and get you some out and just make a ball. It's very simple. Make a ball, you know, it's kind of about the size of these salmon eggs here. And then all you're going to do is you're going to bury your hook in the ball. I'll even do that for you here. It's almost like we're by the water and I'm rigging up the, the fish. So this is, this is that one with the treble hook on it. All I did was I buried that size 18 treble hook in that dough bait. So what's cool about this stuff, and you're going to notice right off the bat when you open it, this is a scented bait. It's uh, specially formulated for the rainbow trout. Now, some of these waters that are stocked, they do have catfish, carp, bass, perch, crappie, stuff like that. Um, you can catch catfish. Uh, I think I've caught one over all the years we've been doing this, um, but it's, it's not very typical. So they usually leave it alone. As I was saying, it's formulated for trout it's a consistency like Play-Doh, and what's cool about this stuff is it floats. So that's the reason why we're making a leader or keeping that 8 to 10 inch distance from our, our sinkers. Because what's going to happen when you fling this out in the water, your weight's going to go to the bottom and sit on the bottom like this, and your bait's just going to be suspended in the column like this. So the fish is just going to swim by, grab your bait, fish on. This has been the most... The best results, most proven way that has worked for me for catching these fish. If you're more of an artificial guy, or if you're not the type of person, if you find it challenging to cast a couple lines out and sit there and watch them for a bite, I do have some lure recommendations for you that I have used a little bit myself over the years, but I have also seen work really well for other guys. Um, if you're familiar with rooster tails, it's like a a weighted spinner that usually has a um, like a feather on the back there's a treble hook there and of course they come in a bunch of different colors some have the feather on the hook some don't here's another one example and then one more so these little rooster tails are great for catching the rainbow trout as well um, there's another it's not a rooster tail but it's more like a MEP spinner it's like a small spinner bait. This sort of thing is also good to throw. So this is also why, why I'm talking about recommending the, the, the light tackle, the ultra light and the, um, the spinning, spinning light tackle so that you can fling this kind of stuff out there. Now something else, because this is your ultimate guide that you can take with you, these little clear bubbles, these things, are, give you some versatility as well. Uh, there's a variety of them out there. They work different ways, but this particular one here has like this tubing through it and the either end will pull out of the tube. But what you do is you run your line through there and then you pull one in out and you start to twist the bubble. And then what it's gonna do is it, it twists that tubing on your line. And so it, cinch, it cinches on the line, so it's, it's going to be fixed. It won't, it won't move. But at any time you want to move it or adjust your, your bubble, you just untwist it and then move it down the line. Um, so the reason why these guys are fun is because you can use them as a little extra weight on your line for flinging your rooster tail out there. And so set it up where you have anywhere from 18 inches to, to 24 inches of space from your your bobber to your to your lure and it'll allow you to cast it a little further um, it'll allow you to suspend the rooster tail higher in the water column particularly if you see trout feeding activity on the top of the water that sort of thing um, what it also offers you is the opportunity to cast flies with spinning tackle so I'm not 
a really big fly fisherman and I don't really use this a whole lot on the stocked ponds and lakes. Again, it's the power bait is the go-to for me, but I'm giving, I'm just here to provide options and tell you what works. Um, usually, you know, like a, some kind of nymph, you know, something, the woolly buggers are, are a bit big, but like the nymph kind of flies are great. Um, but again, it's just a way for you to use spinning gear for casting flies. You use this guy here. Something else you can do when you pull the, the one of the ends out is you can dip it in the water and put some water in there. And then that gives you a little extra weight for casting it out there. And then you just retrieve, retrieve the fly across the water and the fish will come up and hit it. It's also kind of a strike indicator for you. So we've got that. Let me follow my notes here. Something else I recommend to take with you because we're talking about fishing a, a bait um, situation. Something dad and I picked up over time are these little plastic rod holders. So this is a two piece design. This one slides into here and then you're gonna stake this in the ground and then you just have something to put your, your rod tip in. So so that you're prepared, you know, you, you cast out there and then you take out your slack and you got your rod tip sitting there and, and your line is tight and you're able to see when you have a bite. So the two different ways that um, that'll go usually is you'll see the end of your rod and your rod sitting there and it starts twitching or they just pull or your line will slack up. If the line slacks up, the fish has picked up the line and it's coming in towards you. So just take out your slack, you know, and, and um, handle the fish that way. Um, I'm also advocating don't go out and buy stuff you don't need because you could also find nature's rod holder around where you're fishing. A lot of these ponds and lakes are gonna have trees um, around. So as you're walking around, you know, just pick yourself up a branch, make a couple of uh, strategic breaks where you need them. You know, find find you a good find you a good part part of the branch that makes sense. And then after you've broken it a couple times, you've got your uh, nature's rod holder there. So obviously you just stick that into the ground and then put your rod there. Um, something I've seen is when you come up to the pond and you see a couple of these stuck in the in the dirt in the ground there that'll tell you that someone's been fishing there so you know you can figure did someone have good luck here did someone not have good luck here did they move did they leave their their sticks or whatever but it's something you can pay for too if you go this route and you're done fishing for the day you can either pull it out and just throw it in your in your car you know and then you got your you got a rod holder with you from now on all the other times you make trout trips or leave it in the ground for the next guy to come along and be like hey uh, you know pay it forward leave somebody a rod holder there up to you so kids take your kids with you we've covered the spinning gear if your kids are old enough to cast zebco does just great um for the kids or if you, you can use a zebco you know it's not limited to just kids um Keep in mind also, I should have covered this from the beginning, a lot of the um, places you'll be fishing, community fishing lakes, stock ponds, that sort of thing, uh, will limit you to the use of two rods, fishing two rods at a time. My recommendation is take three. That way you have a backup. Um, I'm not saying take, you know, if you're limited to fish three, I'm saying take three, fish two. Um, Again, if you're dealing with trees and, and uh, a bunch of junk in the water, vegetation or, or limbs or, or fallen trees, deadfall, stuff like that in the water, um, or if you have a bad cast and you get a big old wad of line that you don't want to sit there and take the time of fighting and, and, and working out, you know, you can take that and set it aside and then just grab your third rod, which is a backup, and then you don't lose you don't lose any fishing time. You know, you can deal with that later in back at the car or when you get back home or something. Um, the other thing is you can take 
take your two rods that are rigged up to fish the power bait and then have your third rigged up with some kind of artificial and um, as you're sitting there fishing if things are going slow um, reel in one of your uh, one of your bait rods and just kind of set it aside and then you have your other bait rod sitting there out and then you can you can start fishing the artificial you know that way it keeps you involved keeps you moving um, you're not just sitting there stagnant that sort of thing if things get slow another recommendation if things seem slow or if you seem to have a, a difficult time finding the fish when you first come to the lake um, see where everybody is. Um, see if there's any fish activity. Sometimes these trout, and again, it's usually early in the morning or later in the evenings, but sometimes you'll see them hitting the top of the water. So when you see that, that's kind of a telltale sign of where they are. Um, keep in mind that they school, they stay together. So that's an advantage to you. Um, when you first get to the water, see where people are. They're usually gonna be congregated together. Um, I find it interesting that a lot of people will fish where the trout were stocked. Um, that's usually pretty evident because like I said, they back a trailer in and uh, this time of year, it's usually typical that we get a fair amount of rain so the ground will be soft. So there's usually tire marks from the trailer. It's not hard to find where they stock the trout, but it's something that can be helpful uh, when you first show up and you're talking to people be like hey do you know where they stock them or um, you know just if people are hanging out there be observant are people catching fish when you first get there do you see do you see anyone catching anything if you see them catching and pulling and pulling fish in then um, you know it's it's a good idea to start off in that spot um, on the flip side, if you don't see people catching fish and there, there a lot of people are occupying a space, you know, uh, it could just be like an off feeding time. The fish aren't really feeding at that time or the fish are somewhere else. You know, um, if things get slow, don't be afraid to, to walk around, be, be observant, um, pay attention to, to obvious signs of fish activity, that sort of thing. I'm checking my notes, so, uh, I'm not leaving you. Okay, I'm trying not to get on my personal soapbox here, but um, cormorants. Are you familiar with cormorants? If not, they are the brown diving bird that is a better fisherman than you and I will ever be. They are built and specialized for this purpose. These cormorants have come to learn too when um, these fish are stocked. <clears throat> so sometimes you just have a few cormorants that hang out in a body of water and then when the trout gets stocked it's like they start talking too you'll see the population of cormorants just grow these guys can really put a hurting on the fish on the trout population um, if there's a lot of them hanging out but they are also something that you can be aware of um, if they're not in the water fishing and they're just hanging off on uh you know they're usually going to be on a tree or you know somewhere out um out of the water because they have to air dry their wings if they're just hanging out you know on a tree they're, they're not actively fishing um then they're not going to be much help to you there but if you see them in the water and they start fishing they're going down they're coming up just pay attention to them see if they're catching any fish um they are another form of pressure remember i say that these fish school and group together so when these cormorants, uh, if there's a group of them, they will fish together in a group. They will go down and, and they'll work together to, to group the fish tighter so they can easily pick them off. But they can put pressure on the fish and move them. So just something else to put in your toolbox to be observant about if the cormorants are away from you and they're catching fish, but if things are slow or nothing's going on over here where you and the people are, then that is a tip that you could maybe pick up and move and go over there to have better luck. A um, couple, couple tips for if, if the fishing is slow. Um, mix it up with your, your, um, the rods you're fishing the power bait with. Cast, cast one further out, cast one closer in. 
mix it up with your distances. See if the fish are further out, see if they're closer in. If you're not real familiar with the body of water you're fishing, again, there can be things like deadfall from trees, limbs, vegetation, that sort of thing. If your line's been sitting out there for a while and you haven't had a bite, no kind of activity, check your bait um, occasionally. You know, reel it in, check the situation. Maybe your cast landed in a bed of vegetation, so your presentation's not right. Uh, it's it's lost in a mix of salad, so to speak. Um, maybe maybe your line's sitting in a in a mass of, of twigs. Maybe you find that you're hung up. You try to reel it in that sort of thing. Um, the the bite should be there. Um, there's a lot of things to your advantage. Like I said, they don't feed these fish. They're schooling. They hang together. They usually feed twice a day. That sort of thing. Um, two other things I forgot to mention that you need to take with you that I recommend. These guys right here, some forceps. Um, a lot of guys will use like some needle nose pliers or fishing pliers. Those are great. Those will work. But with these little guys and with the little hooks I was talking about, these are really the specialized tools you need for getting the job done. They have another uh, style where they'll have a curve curved in on the forceps those are awesome too these are the straight version either one will work um, and then take a rag um, like a, a hand towel or something I know the fly fishing river guys are gonna say only handle the fish with a wet hand but keep in mind we're, we're it's a meat haul here we're catching to keep um, catch and release in the ponds and lakes like this don't really make sense because it's a winter it's a winter stocking situation they're there to be caught they're there to be harvested the ones that aren't caught the ones that aren't caught by anglers the ones that aren't eaten by big bass and big catfish the ones that aren't eaten by the cormorants are going to die anyways when the water temperatures warm back up in the spring so these fish are there to be caught okay so keep that in mind so when you bring your fish in you have your towel in your hand just bring the fish over and just grab them with the towel Okay, so you're holding the fish in the towel. These suckers are slimy. Uh, unless you like washing your hands over and over and over, or unless you like getting fish slime all over your reel and your grips, don't use the towel. Otherwise, take the towel and use it. So you're holding the fish, you got them there, you need to get your hook out. Keep tension on your line, tight line. If you need to like lay the rod down, or like you know put your foot on it or lean against a tree or something so you've got tension on the line so you can get that hook out. Otherwise, if you've got your kid with you, tell your kid, hey, hold this keep it tight but be careful once you get that hook out you don't want the hook to go flying that sort of thing have a good grip on it once you got your fish off the hook how are you gonna keep it are you gonna uh, use a stringer those little poly stringers cheap effective they do just fine take a little cooler with you ice ice slurry that sort of thing um, bucket bucket works just great you can use a bucket to sit on you can put put some water in it from the lake ice whatever however you want to do it um just let put the fit you know put the stringer on the fish while you still got it and then you know put them in the water put the stringer tie the stringer off whatever you need to do is just drop them in the cooler drop them in the bucket you know the less it keeps your hands clean um also you're going to want your rag because when you're when you're getting out your dough balls you have something to wipe your hands on um can't stress that enough keep your keep your hands clean um you know, we're not catching and releasing trout here. We're catching them and put them in the cooler. Um, can't emphasize enough, you know, keep keep your catch fresh. Um, all too often, I see guys that um, don't, you know, you're gonna spend all the time and the money to go out there and go after some fresh fish. Gosh, keep keep it fresh. Um, I personally, my favorite way is a, is a little cooler. I really like ice slurry. It's super cold ice water mixture. Um, it's, I really like, like it as a humane way to to put the fish in the big sleep that sort of thing um you keep them on a stringer or you keep them in a bucket of water they'll likely be alive uh by the time you're ready to to go home uh that's fine if you want to keep them that way uh, unless they're hooked pretty bad you know and, and they die from a gut hook that sort of thing uh then you'll want some ice or a way to really keep them fresh and cold um if you want to talk about cleaning and, and cooking preparation they're not big fish. Um, if you want to fillet them, I guess you can. Uh, what I found personal way to favorite way to do it is just gut them, 
cut the head off, that's up to you. Some people, if you want to keep the head on, that's fine. But I usually just gut them, clean, clean the belly out really good, cut the head off, dredge them, a little bit of uh, whatever you like to fry fish in. Uh, everybody's got their own thing. A little butter or oil in a pan, a couple of minutes on each side and then they're ready to go, man. Uh, the meat will flake right off the bones with the fork. Uh, they're delicious. No need to scale them. The scales are so tiny. You can eat the skin, don't eat the skin. That's up to you. Um, I really hope I'm covering everything and haven't left anything out for you. My takeaways, I guess. <clears throat> Be sure that you're legal. Follow all the rules and regulations. Be respectful of others. A lot of other fishermen are usually friendly, but some people have their own ways. If they feel you're fishing too close, especially if they're catching, you're not. You know, don't be one of these pot lickers. You know, don't go casting into somebody's spot because they caught a fish and you're struggling. Don't do that. Um, clean up after yourself. If you're taking snacks, um, food, drinks with you, um, that sort of thing. Gosh, pick up your trash. It's it's another soapbox I won't get on just uh you know we're supposed to be the stewards of the beautiful resources you know so let's let's do that let's let's steward the beautiful resources and take care of them and let's be a good example for others you know clean up after yourself I guess I'm going to stop there I hope I have covered everything that I have here my goal is the, for this to be the ultimate resource and guide for you for targeting these trout to give you all the tips and the techniques and tricks that I've learned over the many years, more than 10 years of, of catching these fish and eating them. And um, it's a lot of fun with your kids. I have a lot of kids. I've taken them over the years. Uh, and it's a way to pad the bag limits, like I said. So please, I love ultralight fishing i love fishing for these trout i love sharing this resource with you the best way you can help me out like my video share it with other anglers that struggle with catching these fish share it with somebody who's mentioned to you hey we should go check out the trout the rainbow trout stocking hey maybe we should go try it sometime um and subscribe because i want to do more guides like this for other types of fish that i love catching and 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 that sort of thing. Also, please, in the comments underneath, tell me what helped you the most um, after seeing this and going out to the water and putting it to practice. Let me know what helped you the most, or let me know what tip you liked the best uh, that maybe you hadn't considered or didn't know or hadn't thought of before. Again, all of that helps and supports me. Um, I, I love the idea of, of building a, a rainbow trout fishing community here you know here in the comments let's let get some feedback get chatter going um and obviously all of that helps the machine the algorithm and stuff so and it helps me a lot but most of all thank you thank you for sticking through it this has been a lot of fun and it's just my desire that it's going to help you be more successful out there in the water and again i just can't stress enough it's fun with kids take kids i've even my uh, in-laws kids I've taken my my nephews and my nieces just because it's a lot of fun to see those little guys reel a fish in and uh, and put a smile on their face and enjoy the, the sport so until next time have a good one